Hello guys, Winston here. Sorry for the big lapse in uploading, life's gotten pretty busy around here lately. Longtime viewers of my channel will probably know that I am a huge camera whore. I love seeing the world through a viewfinder, even if tens of thousands of people have already thoroughly documented wherever it is that I'm currently exploring. There's always something special about capturing my own personal take on a particular experience. A year and a half ago, I went on a cruise with my family around the Baltic Sea. Inspired by a build I saw Griffin Hammond make, former host of Indie Mogul, I pieced together a contraption out of PVC that would let me place a small camera behind my shoulder. The build quality, weight, and customizability of my rig left a lot to be desired, but the position of the camera made for a far more personal video than, say, if I'd captured it with a chest harness or a helmet-mounted camera. Fast forward to now, where I'm looking at three significant hiking trips in the next six months, and the idea once again struck me to try and document my trip using the same technique. But instead of relying on a relatively bulky PVC frame to support my camera, I figured I'd utilize as much of my existing gear as possible. After all, no one likes a unitasker or carrying around extra weight. My standard photography kit consists of a no-name camera backpack that hits way above its price class, one of my Nikon bodies, a slick Sprint Pro 2 tripod with a ball mount, and two or three lenses depending on the subject matter. The tripod is usually strapped to the right side of my backpack and I realized that with a little adjustment it would be the perfect spot to mount a camera. I would need to offset the camera a little so my GoPro wouldn't be staring at the back of my head though. So my first order of business in designing a body mounted camera adapter was to figure out how I would mount my contraption to the ball head of the tripod. Most cameras attach to tripods with a quarter twenty screw. But because the thread engagement is so shallow, it's basically impossible to clamp a structure to the tripod using a nut unless whatever you're clamping is really thin. Thin materials are generally weak, so unless I was using something like sheet metal, which I wasn't interested in dealing with, my extension arm would probably end up being either very weak or unstable. So in my mind, the best way to anchor a structure to my tripod was to use a threaded insert that was well supported within the material of the camera arm. At the attachment point, I designed my camera holding structure to be a full half inch thick. It would blend down into a 3 8 inch thick arm that extended back 8 inches. To keep weight down, I designed in some pockets that gently widened towards the end. These pockets wouldn't go all the way through the frame because that thin floor connecting the two main beams actually adds a lot of torsional rigidity to the structure. Tension across thin sheets is good at stabilizing structures and you can see this in old airplane wing designs. Overall, it was a fairly basic concept, though for the hell of it, I put in a generous number of rounds and fillets to make it look smooth and polished. It added a bit of machining time in MeshCam to do all the finishing, but I think the end result was worth it. By the way, I'm cutting the arm out of three sheets of 732nd inch plywood that I glued together. This plywood is made from relatively soft wood, and it's pretty light compared to the other options available at Home Depot. The quality isn't that great, but I'm sealing and strengthening the wood fibers with a coat of lacquer before priming and painting the GoPro arm. Everyone knows that real camera equipment is always black. Since I had extra material, I made two. Each run took about 40 minutes with a 1 8 inch ball end mill. Once you get to the finishing process, there's basically no chance of something going wrong, so I may or may not have ended up stepping away from the machine to cook dinner. I drove in a quarter 20 threaded insert, mounted the arm on a quick release plate, and test fit my GoPro to my backpack. Because of my tripod's ball head, the single degree of freedom in my GoPro mount is more than enough to level my camera at most angles of elevation. One camera feature I really appreciate coming from a dirt cheap contour camera is built-in Wi-Fi. I'm running a GoPro Hero 4 and this makes framing my shot basically foolproof. I can figure out what adjustments I need to make without using a mirror to self-assess the orientation of my camera. The best part is, the only thing I'm adding to my everyday photography carry to get these POV shots is a simple little extension arm, and it weighs less than 20 grams. It's a little too weak if you want to mount a GoPro on a second ball head. The center of mass is too far removed from the beam. But by picking a denser, stronger material to make these out of, you could certainly add the required torsional rigidity to make it possible. Overall, I'm really happy with how this build turned out, and I'm looking forward to using it in the future. And that's all I have for this week. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and keep an eye out for this project in my future adventure and vacation videos.